July 17, 1982, high in the mountains above Lake Tahoe, hikers stumbled on a horrifying sight at a spot known as Sheep's Flat. A woman's body, face down in the dirt, clues were sparse. No purse, no ID, just a bullet wound to the back of her head, crudely covered with a pair of men's underwear. There were two sets of footprints leading to the scene from where a car had been parked. Only one set returned. An autopsy has shown that her last meal was a salad. For nearly 40 years, no one knew her name or who killed her. Detectives pieced together fragments. The victim was in her early 30s. She wore Lee jeans, tennis shoes, a blue sleeveless top, and a swimsuit underneath. An autopsy confirmed she had been sexually assaulted, then executed at point-blank range. She became known only as Sheep's Flat Jane Doe, a faceless file in the Washoe County cold case cabinet. For decades, detectives chased every lead. Her fingerprints matched no one. Her face, sketched and reconstructed, sparked no recognition from the public. The trail went cold. The case shelved, reopened, and shelved again. Then in 2018, a new tool emerged, forensic genetic genealogy. By uploading DNA into public databases like GED Match, detectives could trace unknown victims or killers through distant cousins. They had just one clue left, DNA preserved from that 1982 crime scene. The genetic connections pointed to Michigan and eventually one name, Mary Edith Silvani. She had grown up in Pontiac, lost her father at 16, drifted west, searching for stability. She even gave up a child for adoption in the early 1970s. At last, the faceless Jane Doe had an identity. But finding her name only deepened the question of who killed her. A second family tree was built, this time for the unknown male DNA left on her body. Branch by branch, one man emerged, James Richard Curry, a drifter, a violent ex-con and serial killer arrested one year after Mary's murder in California for other murders. How Mary ever crossed paths with James Curry, no one knows. She lived a life on the margins, drifting west, moving from place to place. Her ties to family were distant and strained enough that when she vanished, no one filed a missing persons report. Curry never faced consequences for Mary's death. Just one day after that 1983 arrest, he hanged himself in a California jail cell. He was gone one year after he took Mary's life. Investigators needed to be sure, so they turned to science again. Curry's own children volunteered their DNA. The results came back undeniable. The crime scene profile was their father's, a perfect genetic match. Justice, maybe not in a courtroom. But nearly 40 years after Mary Silvani was found murdered in the Tahoe Mountains, her story was finally told, her name restored, her killer unmasked.